Okay, so I'm going to be introducing you guys. I'm going to be trying to do this series of videos here. I apologize if you can hear some noise in the background. I apologize about my appearance. This is all kind of on the fly. It's something that I want to start doing more of uh, for you $5 plus patrons. Um, I've been kind of neglectful in getting these uh, longer format videos put together for you. I don't know how much value you get out of them or if it's something you're really eager to see or not. I know you're all been very gracious and nobody's ever really said anything to me about it, but it's something that I want to start <clears throat> producing more of and just start to be able to uh, have some more concrete content to put out there. So in this situation we've got uh, the video that I created um, of the process of drawing Valen Luca. Ryan Reynolds is Valen Luca specifically and so my, my goal or my plan here is to put this out in a number of longer format videos because the video is like almost three hours long um, and I don't think that that's like conducive to uh, sitting in front of a computer um, so I'm going to release them in sort of like chunks or like chunks based on the stages of drawing so the first stage is uh, putting the pencils together and just the drawing component of the painting, which I've always stated is very important. I'm going to start the video now, so you shall, you'll start to see the drawing taking place in the background. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Greg Manchess. He's an artist who I'm super fond of, and I've talked about him in a number of sort of recent interviews and different things that I've done. I have um, just really admire his work. He's very uh, got a very cohesive, very... Uh, economic way of painting. He's an, an oil painter, works in a traditional medium, so his stuff comes together a lot quicker in a sense because there's an immediacy to natural medium that you kind of lose when you're going to a digital medium. Digital medium has like so much flexibility and has so many strengths, but um, you lose a little bit of that immediacy that comes with a traditional medium. But um, he has talked a little bit and so like with this piece here you can see i'm drawing it i've got ryan reynolds reference image on the left and then i've got um my drawing what you're seeing is me drawing inside of fresco on the ipad so on the right hand side where the square is there i'm drawing with my stylus my apple pencil on the ipad inside of adobe fresco which is a program that i've been using a lot lately i really like it it's uh it does a very very nice job of emulating traditional media um and so i've been really enjoying it this piece was done in that um, a number of the other recent portraits that i've done were created inside of adobe fresco i've kind of been like a procreate guy um for the most part but uh i've been enjoying exploring adobe fresco as well so this uh what you're seeing here you can see how, if you've seen any of my other videos about portrait draw drawing, I've borrowed from things like Bridgman's or um, uh, Loomis, kind of some of the traditional portrait artists that are out there, uh, where you start with kind of a round circle and you divide the face into its um, proportions. And so in this case, you can see I've got a circle there and I've divided the face down the middle and then tried to draw a line where the the eyes, the nose and the mouth would be on the face. Um, this piece I feel was one of my closest attempts at drawing straight up. Uh, you can see uh, later on how I correct myself using the digital tools. Um, Coming back to Greg Manchester, what I loved about a recent interview that I saw with him was he was he's a, an educator, so he teaches a lot of artists about art and drawing, but he also is like a very accomplished artist. Um, so I have a lot of respect for his methods and instruction and the way that he kind of goes about his work from a technical perspective. And in the video, in the interview that I saw with him, he was talking about tracing, and how it's not a shortcut, it's like a skill involved in drawing. And he talked about, um, you know, uh, Renaissance masters and how they used like methods of transferring their drawings to the surface that they were gonna be painting to kind of shortcut the drawing process. Um, and they did things where they would take a large piece of paper and basically draw the figure and then punch holes where the, to line up where the drawing would be and then they would transfer it onto the surface 
by rubbing chalk through the holes and it would give them basically an outline of where the content needed to go. Um, and Greg Manchester was just saying that it's important skill to be able to trace. Um, it gives you the capacity to create work quicker and more accurately. Um, and I totally agree with that. I use that so much in my commercial work and even in these portraits that I do that are fan art. Uh, I've said before that I can get fairly good likeness of things through sort of a straight up drawing process. Uh, it just takes longer. So it's a longer process for me to get the likeness nailed down. Um, but it is a skill that I do possess. <clears throat> it's something that I would like to work on more because I would love to be able to like nail it more more consistently um, but that's a different process like these portraits that I'm doing um, are typically done my goal with them is to have something completed in as short amount of time as possible because I, uh, my time is short and um, I enjoy it and it's fun but it's like I have to be efficient with it because it's time away from my family because it's done in my spare time away from my job and so my job doesn't allow me the opportunity to work on stuff like this. I have to kind of fit it into my extracurricular time. So it's really important to me that I have very efficient processes in place. And I'm slowly, I think, getting more efficient as I work in the mediums that I'm working in. So the programs and stuff, just getting more comfortable with the tool sets. Um, but usually this is what you're seeing here on screen right now. This is my process. Like, oh, if I'm going to do it, if I'm not going to trace the drawing outright, I'll draw it like this on a layer um, and I'll try to get the, the accuracy there. You can see here I'm bringing in, I've gotten the drawing basically done to a point that I'm happy. And then I've brought in this, the, the drawing or the portrait, sorry, in on a separate layer. I'll drop it behind my line art. And then um, once I have it kind of positioned in the right place, I'll gauge the effectiveness of my drawing. And so sometimes I approach my drawings like this so I get a little bit of practice with my seeing and just trying to see if I'm if I'm seeing correctly because um, it's just kind of refreshing for me to kind of I guess evaluate where my skill level of seeing is at because drawing is seeing right like to, to be a, uh, an accurate drawer uh, a drafts person draft person if you want to create drawings that are accurate to what you're viewing what you're looking at that just takes practice and repetition and utilization of the techniques that are are there so you can see here like i was fairly happy but you can tell this is my this is one of my challenges is i tend to put the the eyes a little too high on the head and for some reason i always end up with like too much width to this center part of the skull um, but I was like pretty happy overall his lips and his nose were like bang on in the right place and re in relationship to his chin the shape that I had for his chin was like bang on uh, even like his hairline and the overall like structure of his head was pretty much like very close um, I had his ears his ears flaring out a little too far and his right eyebrow was a little bit too high and his right eye was a bit too high but there were like you have to understand like these are margins of error that for me I just know what it takes me to get to the stage that I need to be at and uh, I was happy with that I guess it, it made me feel like I have actually been growing a little bit through the process of doing all of these portraits that I've been doing and this is a great practice that you you all can apply in your own work with the tools that we have now you don't need like a what, what is it called I don't remember what it's called, but the thing that you look through is to be able to like see what you're drawing, spectrograph, I don't know what it's called. <laughs> Sorry, but you don't need that. You can use digital tools like this. Uh, if you're working digitally, it's it's just so easy, right? To throw the photo in, do a quick like loose tracing of it. And then you can, you'll can you see when we get into the next phase, like when I get into uh, blocking and, uh, yeah, the blocking in the colors, that the line art is essentially a guide for me, but then um, I depart from that pretty quickly once I start throwing the color in behind it because painting is like a layering thing, right? So during my painting process, I'm gonna end up destroying the line art, essentially. But um, I think I'm getting 
I'm getting cl more clever in how I approach that. And um, I think that what hopefully I'll be able to show that in future pieces. And I've picked this up from Alpe Effie. Really recommend you, if you're interested in art and painting, go look at his work. It's just A L P A E F A Y F A or E F E. Alpe Effie. I think it's E F E. Really, really good. Super skilled. Uh, he works traditionally as well with oil. But when he does portraits, he'll he'll do, I'm not convinced that he's not uh, using some kind of a projector to get the line art down because I don't see him do the drawing a lot. But regardless, he's got a lot of skill. And you can see when he's doing, going into the painting that he starts with the main features and he'll just make sure that those are like really tightly mapped in before he paints everything else in. My tendency has always been to just flood everything with color and just start mashing stuff. Um, but I think I'm going to start pushing more towards that direction of carefully um, mapping out the essential features, the most important features of the of the face, uh, because then I have like a very, very clear uh, direction in terms of what to do with the paint. I think it'll just slow things or speed things up for me a little bit. So you can see here I've got, <laughs> I did the trace over and then I have, had to go in and sort of like remove my error my errors and so you can see clearly like what parts I had to remove and where I was wrong there where I missed stuff um, but yeah I'm like pulling the lid off here this is how I do my stuff you guys there's no secrets here this is how I do it this is how you can do it to get things more accurate um, Greg Manchester says it's not cheating it's 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 using the tools that are at hand to get it to where you need it to be so the next installment will be uh, the blocking in with the colors and I'll get that one up and ready as soon as I possibly can while I'm in the middle of doing all these other portraits and stuff. I'm working on a commission right now so that's going to take up some of my time. But I hope this was helpful and interesting and I would love to hear your feedback to know if this is um, like a useful format for you. Uh, if you'd rather not see this and just see the art, let me know that too. <laughs> I just know that sometimes it's nice to see the person um, such as they are. And uh, yeah, it would be great to hear your feedback on this video and on the process of this. All right, until next time, you guys take care of yourselves. I hope you're all healthy and well. Thank you so much for continuing to partner with me here on Patreon. And I will check in with you next time. Ciao. Thanks you guys for watching this one. I hope that it was informative and useful for you. I will be creating the next video in this piece, which will be about dropping in the, uh, the flat colors, basically the blocking in and the painting, and that will be coming soon. So keep your eyes open for that. Until next time, uh, have a great day.